I think drawing the box is much more satisfying than putting down the plastic. Whoa! Okay, this is the best part. We will show that F is in fact a bijection. And if you haven't seen the first video where we talk about the set of all the natural numbers and the set of all the integers, they have the same number of elements, be sure you go check it out. In this video, we'll just do some proof for F being a bijection. First thing first, we have to remember that to show a function is a bijection, we have to show two things. The first thing is F has to be one to one. And the second thing is F has to be on two. Let's begin right here. And to start with the proof, we are going to put down PF for it. It just feels so good every time we put down PF for the proof, but unfortunately, we cannot get partial credit by just putting down PF. But anyway, first thing, we'll just say F is one to one. This is the first part, right? And let me just spell out one to one like this, instead of putting down one to one. <laughs> and some people will also use the term injective. That means the same as one to one, right? Okay. Whenever we do proofs, we have to know the definition and we have to use the definition. So let's talk about what a one-to-one -one function is. And this is how we start. First, we are going to pick two elements from the input set, which is the domain set right here. So I'll just say that n1, n2 being the elements of n, like this. You just pick two elements right here. And you're going to pick that and you are going to Assume that they have a special property, so you just say so that, and the property is, in fact, they have the same output, meaning f of n1 is in fact equal to f of n2, like this. So you just always start with this whenever you want to show f is being one to one. If you put this down, you can earn some partial credit, I believe. Well, for a one to one function, is that when they have the same output, in fact, they came from the same input. That's being a one to one function. And let me just write it down right here for you guys. We actually will have to show, we will show that the truth is n1 is actually the same as n2. So this right here is our blueprint in blue to show that f is a one-to-one -one function. So now, let's continue. We have this part already, and this is what we are trying to achieve. Okay, focus on this part, right? Because this is the property that we have, they have the same output. So of course, we are going to refer back to the function. Hmm. Well, if they have the same output, if you look back to here and here, n over 2, if n is even, and you see n right here, right, they are all non-negative, and divided by 2. This part is also going to be non-negative, and this part will always be negative, though, because you have the negative times the non-negative part. And of course, you have zero. Zero is just, you know, in the first situation. Anyway, we actually have two cases to consider. So case one, right? Case one. Let's do the following. I will just say that, hey, f of n1, which is the same as f of n2, in fact, they are both non-negative, the non-negative situation. So we're looking at this part right here, right? So, what it means is that I will put in n1 into this part of the formula. Likewise, I will do the same for n2. Therefore, we'll get n1 over 2, right, which is equal to n2 over 2. And as you can see, you can just multiply both sides by 2. Of course, this is n1 is equal to n2. And you see, we achieved it that. Done. That's case 1. And it's just like solving the equation, so it's just really fun. And now, of course, we have to look at case 2. Case 2 is, when can we use this formula, like this part of the formula, right? Of course, that's the part that when the output's being negative. And of course, this is equal to that, so they're both negative in this case. So we're going to say a, f of n1 is the same as f of n2, both of them being negative. And when both of them are being negative, we put down n1 and n2 into here and here, right? The same, n1 and n2 into here. So, We'll just put that down. So we have negative n1 plus 1 divided by 2. This is equal to negative n2 plus 1 divided by 2. And of course, do our little fractions. We can multiply both sides by negative 2. So we get n1 plus 1 is equal to n2 plus 1. And of course, n1 is equal to n2. And of course, n1 is equal to n2 again. 
and those are the two situations. So we have shown that f is in fact one to one because we did this right here. One thing you have to be careful is that if you end up with like a function that has like n square, you know that might not be one to one down to, meaning it may not be ha having an inverse, right? So this right here is actually pretty nice. And again, this is just how you write down the mathematical proof for all this. Now, second part, f being onto, uh, f is onto something, huh? Hmm. Sometimes some people will say f is subjective, meaning onto, right? Of course, we will have to write down the definition. So for onto, it's different. And that we will start with an element in z, right? So I will just say let. I don't want to use little z because little c is for complex numbers. So I'll just use k, right? k in z, which is this set. Well, onto means that for all the elements right here, somebody from the first set will hit the elements here. So onto, so it will fulfill everything. There's no leftovers. When you pick k in z, we have to find for all, I, I should say for all, but it doesn't really matter. It depends on the language that you want to use. For all k in z, well, let k in z, we will find, we will find an element in the first set, right? So that f of that input will give us k. This right here is what we will do when f is being onto, and now we just again have to make this happen. So let k in z, we will find an n, and we will have to write n. We will have to write n in terms of k. That's the whole key. Now, here is the deal. Again, if you look at z, we have to look at two cases. Hmm, case one. Again, we will just break down z into negatives and also non-negatives. So perhaps I will just say k, the first case is being non-negative. All right, now as you can see, this is pretty much the output, which is like the answer for the k, right? And you are trying to find an, well, k is being non-negative, so you are looking for n over 2 being k. So you can do some scratch work, n over 2 being equal to k. How can we solve for n? Just 2k, right? So. So if k is greater than or equal to 0, what we'll do is we'll say let n equal to 2k. And that's exactly what we talk about it, n in terms of k, right? Let n being 2k, and we did it, that's it, because I'll show you. First of all, if n is equal to 2 times k, you will have to see that this is in fact in the elements of n, because first, k is non-negative, when you multiply by 2, it's again going to be non-negative. So n is in fact an element of the set of all the natural numbers, and we will see that f of n, let me just put this down like this, which is f of 2k, and 2k is even, you use the first part, and you just put down 2k into the top, which is going to be 2k, and you divide it by 2, and we end up with k. Check this out. We have f of n equals k. That's exactly what we want. Checks. Very nice, huh? Now, case two. Well, k being negative. So it's very similar to these situations. Well, k being negative, you hope to find the n from here, right? So you just kind of do the scratch work again. So just put it on the side, just say k equals this, which is negative n plus 1 over 2, and then do the little algebra, right? Multiply by negative 2 on both sides, which is negative 2k, and then subtract 1, and that will give us n. Right? Just do the algebra. So I will just say let n equals that, namely negative 2k minus 1. And let's erase this. So nobody will see it. And then, huh, how did we end up with this? That's cool. Anyway, let's talk about why this is in and first. Well, k is negative. Multiply by negative, that will give us positive. But if you are not sure about the minus 1, we can just do the following. We can say this is negative parentheses 2k plus 1, like this. Well, k is less than 0. You can see that. You can just say k is, let's say, negative 1, for example. Negative 1 put here, you will actually end up with 
negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1 times negative 1 is positive, right? Just, just need to check on your own to convince yourself. So that's pretty much the idea. You have to just indicate that this is, in fact, in uh, the set of the natural numbers. And then pretty much we do this again. We see that f of n, this is equal to f of negative 2k minus 1, like this. This is going to be a positive r number, right? First of all, it's positive, and this is an r number, right? So we will use this formula right here and just work it out. Negative parentheses, this is the input. The input is this, which is negative 2k minus 1. And then you add 1 to it. And then divide it by 2. And of course, just work this out. This is just going to be 0. Negative, negative is positive. Altogether is k. Aha. We did it. Perhaps the k should be in red. Like this. So as you can see, we achieved this again. Any k in z, we will be able to find n in n so that f of n is equal to k. And again, we have the cases. And we're all done. Man, I've been waiting to put on this box and shade this in. Whenever you finish the proof, you draw the box like that. Whew, so good, so good. I think drawing the box is much more satisfying than putting down a plus C. I don't know, maybe you guys will not agree with me on that, but let me know. Anyway, that's it.